You may have heard this already. President Biden had to apologize yesterday as well. There's a lot of apologies on this show today. I'm sure, I mean, I've gotten some emails saying, when are you liberal turds going to talk about President Biden? Ah. Biggie's often called a liberal turd for his handling of the world in 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. Uh, President Biden yesterday was thought he was off mic. And Dave Aiken will tell you, you got to treat every single microphone like it's on. And camera. He was right in front of it. I mean, he was <laughs> right. It was a, well, now that sounds about right. It was right. Yeah. <laughs> he was right in front What's of this? it. He was. And he said. But they were ushering the reporters were, out, yes, right? Yes. Like the session had ended. Session had ended. And there, there were a few were still sh- shouting questions. You know, the thing about it was the session was supposed to be on inflation. Uh, but instead, all the reporters were asking about Russia and their Ukraine, in, Ukraine sure. invasion. So he took a bunch of questions on the, on the subject of Russia, but not any on inflation. So one of the Fox News reporters, Peter Ducey, was saying, well, what about inflation? And he said, and the question he was, you know, is inflation going to be a real trouble spot for you or something? And Biden was on mic but didn't know it. Thank you, guys. Let's Will go. you take questions on inflation then? Let's move. Thank you. Thank you. Do you all. think inflation is a political liability? That's a great asset. More inflation. What a stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> what a stupid son of a bitch. He said, "Is is a great asset." <laughs> Well, they were both being a little passive aggressive. Yeah, yeah really. exactly. They were being do you view inflation as an asset? Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I do. It was about the midterm elections. Yeah. Yeah. They deserved each yeah. other on that one. Is inflation an yeah. asset? Is that what you want? More inflation? He's a stupid son of a bitch. Stupid son of a bitch. Great question. Doozy. He's a stupid son of a bitch. Doozy from over at Fox News. Uh-huh. Basically, he's just needling him on inflation. Mm-hmm. And then later, Peter Ducey, back on Fox News, said, the president has called me to personally apologize. Within about an hour of that exchange, he called my cell phone and uh, he said, it's nothing personal, pal. And we went back and forth and we were talking about moving forward. And I made sure to tell him that I'm always going to try to ask something different than what everybody else is asking. And he said, you've got to. And that's a quote from the president, so I'll keep doing it. It's nothing personal. I just called you a stupid son mm-hmm. of a bitch. <laughs> not personal to yeah. me. No, no. It might not, be not, personal to you. Not personal mm-hmm. at all, you stupid son. He didn't even say that was a stupid-ass question. He said, you stupid yeah. son of a bitch. Son, that was a real old man move. <laughs> mm-hmm. Listen, you son of a bitch. <laughs> You're, we can hear you. Well, what? that's the problem is the mic. Well, yeah, Every the, president does it. The microphone is the issue. Mm-hmm. And it was right in front of him. Mm-hmm. That's why we treat these microphones as if they're always on. Hot, hot, they're hot, and the acoustics and all. We don't. Mm-hmm. We don't. We you do know, we don't remember mistake. as much. I think as we should is the camera presence. Oh no, that, doubt. no, I forget, I forget about that. No doubt, that is so easy to forget because they're very don't, unobtrusive. Don't even think about it. Exactly mm-hmm. right. I made a mistake. Well, like when you hitch up your britches, God knows. Boy, look at that. Every time. Look at that. I see him, Fred Mertz. I'm like the... Uh, <laughs> dating game. That's a dating... That's a day vacant dating game. Right? <laughs> it's a movie. Uh, it is a it's movie It's out now. right now. It's out right now. It's actually quite... Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Fred Mertz. Oh, your old ass, old your ass, ass mi- references. Your microphone is on. Biggie, your, mi- your microphone Stupid is on. Bitch. Sorry, pal. <laughs> Nothing personal. Uh, I did something I shouldn't have said it the other day, and now I've got the littlest patriot wondering about. You know how I'm always I always know birthdays and stuff of you guys. I do. <laughs> it's it's one of your unusual skills. Again, if you were exactly. building a resume, exactly. You know, but they'd say, "What are your strengths? Passive aggressiveness." Yeah. I can remember birthdays. I remember birthdays. Uh, this old scallywag Dave Aiken over here has always kept it hidden from me. I don't know his birthday. I've narrowed it to August, mm. but I don't know it. But I know everybody else's. I know Chris Tim's January 9. I know Biggie's January 21st. It just goes on. I know these. It seems like whenever there's numbers involved in something, you have uh, you, you, you remember something. Although you're starting to fall off with age in the Super Bowl. I know that. I keep. I'm. I'm trying to get back up to speed on those. I don't, mm-hmm. The new ones, I don't remember nearly as well as I remember the old ones, you know. Mm-hmm. this like, In fact, this year, Super Bowl 56, I was like, golly, okay, i got to get that in <sighs> See, mind. See, the Super Bowl, NFL, I've said this many times, they've mm-hmm. done themselves no favors with the Roman numerals. They should just right. give the year of the game. Yeah, that's... I'm because a- otherwise, you have to remember two numbers. LXVII mm-hmm. was what year. I always remember 
the number of the game. Most people remember the year. I think they do that because it splits. It does. It spans yeah. a year. You're right. It, it starts in one year yeah. and ends in the other. Like the other day, I was saying that the last time Georgia won the national championship, and I think I said 1981, which I meant January 1st of 1981. They won it for the 1980 season. Right. Correct. People that were is saying true. They won it in 1980, but I, what I meant was they won it on the 1st of January of 81. Yeah, I think that is accurate. Duh, so, you stupid son. <laughs> <laughs> Biggie. Let people know how it works. Yeah. Biggie. Don't explain it. His microphone's on. Did you see, this is totally off the top, but uh, some people are saying that the Super Bowl logo this year, I didn't notice this, but they had it on NBC, and it's got that big L and a V and an I, and there are like shadows of what are supposed to be trees, like for Los Angeles, I guess. Are but, they palm trees? Yeah, I suppose, but they're sort of shaded in red, so it looks like there's blood dripping down the logo so people are saying it looks like a horror movie like a scream poster yeah but you really have to look at it to notice it so when i read it i was like oh i get it now because mm -hmm. it looks like blood dripping from the top instead of i thought they're all standardized they changed it a little this year i, I guess i thought they were standard. they're usually silver yeah it used to be just silver block kinda. there's a little bit of a shadowing in there like the whole thing is shaded in red and the trees are with the are, trophy are in the middle yeah and the trees are white yeah this is on the letters the l the v and the i I see. And uh, it looks like the LV and I have blood trickling down them now. So they're saying it's like a Friday the 13th thing. But I never would have noticed that if, if people hadn't. No. I mean, actually, it looks more like a wildfire. Well, no. Yeah. You see what I'm, it does? It's not bright red. It's like a pinkish yeah. hue to it. Here's a, So the other day, this is my birthday thing. Mm. Uh, Chris, Chris Jim Henry left for the day. This was Friday. And a package was delivered. And I was sitting in the office, you know diligently working on something. And Chris Dim was gone. Word, 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 word. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Littlest Patriot comes in, and he's carrying this big package, and he says, package for Beth Dim in here. And I was like, ooh. And he sat it down. That's Chris Dim's wife. And he sat it down. He goes, I guess Mr. Dim's getting a package in here. And I said, oh, he'll be interested in that. And I didn't know what it was, but it was heavy. And mm -hmm. he was having, like, Littlest Patriot is even, like, he was carrying it. Like, this is heavy. And he goes, it might be a package for his wife's birthday. And I said, no, it's not that. That's May 10th. And he goes, how do you know that? <laughs> I said, I don't know. I just, I just know those things. Did he begin slowly backing away? Uh, he said, I'm not going to, you know, I, I, he goes, you wouldn't, shouldn't say anything about it. It might be for his wife's birthday. I said, no, it's May 10th. And then he said, well, maybe it's for their anniversary. I said, no, it's August 25th. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> And he just said, "That's I can't. Uh, I'm leaving. <laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> Son of a bitch. That's what, <laughs> that's what he Like said. Rain Man in here. <laughs> that's what he said. Uh, I like Rain get... Man, but not rich. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's what he said. He's like, Rain Man had nice clothing. Aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, he said, I have trouble working with you after stuff like this. Yeah. It's no good. I read today. That could be an HR thing. I don't know. It could be. We, I, we've got a new no-nonsense department. That's right. <laughs> I, maybe. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't know these dates. Like I, maybe I shouldn't. I can write that. you up. I probably shouldn't be saying stuff like that. Yeah, they're cold, man. It's gulag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They put you in the gulag. <laughs> they, they write you up for something yeah. like that. They throw away the key. Good lord, man. HR, the new HR is right up our alley, though. Yeah. Last email I got in all caps said, "Do not reply all." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, <laughs> finally, Perfect. people who think like us. They got one step right. <laughs> they do not reply. For years, we've been burned with the people who. Great job! Great job! <laughs> Finally, finally, HR is people like us. Yeah, they don't. Here's some information. Do not reply all. And I couldn't agree more. Now, I don't know if this opens the door for, for the rest of us. Or... I know. Not sure. I mean, they're the only group in this country that wants Russia to invade Ukraine. Well, I mean, this uh, this is, has to do with workplace stuff, too. I wonder if Biggie has done this. New survey says that 59% of people. That's have... nearly two out of three. That's right. Right at, bad. right at 6 out of 10 of people, 59% of people, have uh, are so disgruntled with their job, they've gone ahead and written their resignation letter just waiting to turn it in. That, with no plans of leaving. They've got it in. They just in, haven't pulled the trigger. That's right. They've got it on the computer. They haven't hit print. They haven't done it yet. Filled in the date. <laughs> exactly. Especially younger people. Especially your Gen Zs and millennials. They're ready Yikes. to move. They're ready to go. Yeah, see, now I wouldn't do that. I'd... I'd I think that'd be bad luck to, to type it and then uh, to have it ready to yeah. go. I feel like you'd end up getting fired when you didn't want That's to be right. fired That's or something. Right. Well, how right. many? I mean, I would of the people that you interact with on a daily basis mm -hmm. at a store, gas station, what have you. Mm -hmm. They're not going to turn in a resignation letter. They just don't show. No, right? They just quit. Oh well, that's probably true. Yeah. I mean, right. how many people resign with a letter? 
anymore. Well, you send. What do you do? Send an email now, or uh, how do you? Well, I think or just you, walk in. Or you and just say, call and say, "This is my two week notice." Or maybe so. Maybe yeah. you don't have to write it up anymore. But this is almost sixty percent of people have it's, it. That's ready staggering. To go. That high. seemed way high to me. I mean, no. write is it part of that therapy. You think for them when they say, well, "Let me write this out." Maybe. Oh, I'm sure. It's yeah. Not, it's not just having it prepared and ready to go. It's about. See so yeah, how that's therapeutic, though. Your resignation from your job. Some people might say. They better watch it or I'm going to pull uh, out maybe. that letter. Yeah. Well, they're in a job they don't like, clearly. And that's... Well, you know, I've been told many times, if you're mad at somebody, type an email out to them, then don't send it. Yeah. Yeah. What if you've accidentally sent it? Now, send. I do that daily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With one person. Do it in words. <laughs> What did, he, what, what did Biggie say there? What, kind of that trailed you, off. You said one person. One person in particular. I email daily, type it out, and then I just delete it. Mumble to myself, stupid son of a bitch. doesn't appreciate any of that. I don't think that's healthy. I don't think that's healthy. I don't think that's right. Well, it's different for everybody. Uh, they're saying that, you know what some people are doing now, some to keep employer employees, pay them daily. You you pay hmm. you you have daily pay, especially at uh, like fast food places and stuff like that. If you can See work it, because people want their money as soon as they walk out the door. So hmm. it's an everyday paycheck, which Just, I think you get a little bit less money. Isn't it like that with servers? Don't they get don't they tip every out day? every night and get cash? I guess they do with the tips, don't they? I thought they did, but I don't yeah. know. Places work so different with cards now. So, but I always thought at the end of the night, yeah. end of their shift, they would count it out and say, "Here's your sixty bucks." Used to yeah, cards may be different. Used to do that. Right. That was one of the uh, that was one of the big things with delivery driving mm-hmm. for. You got your tips every day, yeah. mm-hmm. and that still is a selling point. You know, every day you walk away with tips and mileage. It said some employers are starting to, if you can figure out, I believe there are apps to do it, to pay their employees, even non-tip like tip work. You actually get your money as you walk out the door mm-hmm. every night. And I guess somehow they work the taxes. I don't know how they do that. but there's something to it. Yeah. I see these banks on TV that will pay you two or three days. Two days ahead. Ahead of your mm-hmm. paycheck. Really? I've seen the commercials. Yeah, I don't know too. how it works, but they say get your you, you have access to your next paycheck two or three, two or three days, days before before it's in your account. Boy, I, I don't know how that works or how it. I don't either. How they know? Yeah, how would they know how much the paycheck? I'm sure it's just sort of a. It's got to be some sort of standardized like a balloon loan, right? <laughs> yeah, but and then they probably but you're good for it up yeah. to X number of dollars, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Unless your money doesn't come in, then you. Get 120 percent interest or something. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they have to figure a way to make money on it somehow. That's really weird, isn't it? Because sometimes, well, I guess if you have a standard paycheck every two weeks, the exact same amount, they'll know how much they could put in there. Yeah, that's that's, that's a little bit strange. Two or three days makes a difference. Yeah. Uh, Lisa, you're talking about the resignation letters. The the stat is that 59 percent of people have them ready to go, just haven't printed them out yet, with no plans to quit as of yet. Lisa, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I do. It is like kind of a bad omen to have one ready because I feel like that is bad luck. But a lot of companies nowadays do exit interviews when you do quit. So it's not, it's also not a bad idea to have something prepared somewhere just so you're prepared for that interview. Uh So you know what you're going to say about that. Have you sat through an exit interview, Lisa? No, no. But I know people who have. Um, yeah. That's the company I work for. So okay, I wonder how long an exit interview was? I've never had one. What do you think? Fifteen, twenty minutes? Just uh, you know, here are the things I think you could do better. Something my, like that. Yeah, that'd be my guess. And and would you be really stone cold honest with the on the way? Out I don't think so because I think you're burning bridges. I agree. I think in in most people don't want to. I agree. Leave a bad taste in anybody's mouth. Thank you, Lisa. Especially if you got a severance that's on the line. Well, you never know. You might be back. I mean, you, people have left mm-hmm. here and come back. You know, you never know mm-hmm. what's going to happen. Oh yeah. I, I, I myself took you a, yourself for one. I you yourself. A, I took a four. You're a statistic. I went out into te- the world of television, and said, "This is not for me." I yeah. chewed you up and spat you right back out <laughs> for the radio. Did radio call you back, or did you go back on your knees? I'd say somewhere in between. <laughs> <laughs> they had a shift to cover and you were yeah, free. I, was, I, was, I just let it be known. I, I'm free and I, I got a car payment. I've prayed for this moment. Let's do it. I made a terrible mistake. I've made an awful, awful mistake here. This is not good. I am not TV worthy. I cannot be on TV. Manford 5000, you're talking about employee pay. Some people paying now every day. Go ahead. Hey, good morning, guys. Let me get my suck up out of the way. You guys are the best morning show ever. No, stop it. Thank you, Manford 5000. Thank you. And. As you know, I'm in Tennessee. Um, we're, we work at a factory. I don't want to say the name of it, but people are so disgruntled that they don't work the whole shift and they leave half days. But now the factory needing the help, 
they're saying the catch is if you stay all day, Monday through Friday, they'll give you an extra four dollars per hour on your check. Oh my God! Just you're, you're just forty for hours a week? just for staying, they give you the extra four dollars an hour. Hmm. And is that has that made people stay? I bet it has. Yeah, well, so far it's only rolled out yesterday, and we only had half the staff. Oh, yeah, they don't want to work ten hour shifts. Wow, that's Thanks. unbelievable. Thank you, Manfred Five. Good now, luck, brother. Do you like working there? Do you like your job? Oh yeah, I love it. I wish I could say the name, but I guess it's just based on the position. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. yeah. Some people you know, don't like it. Thanks, Manfred Five Thousand. Really appreciate your phone call and your comments. That's awfully nice. I'm of wondering you. if some of these part-time positions in some places, like fast food, I think that first comes to mind is people go in and work as much as they need to work, and then they leave. They just quit. They, they, they yeah, or, yeah. or they work the day, and they're like, I don't need to work two more hours yeah. today. I've got the money I need in my bank. I'll be back tomorrow and work <laughs> yeah. three or four hours. Uh, uh, I can tell you, um, I was helping, you know, hire for That's a while. The pizza joint, right? The pizza place, and. You know, I was told different things. And yes, some people come in for a day and go, nah, I ain't doing this and quit. You get the best I ever got was somebody who told me they don't get out of bed for less than 15 an hour now. Right. It's become that. Yeah, it's become that way. Listen, but even in the 80s, when I was working barbecue, I can't tell you how many people I would train on a Monday and Tuesday. And, Be gone. And, gone. And I, yeah, I was supposed to, they were supposed to like take over for me on Wednesday and work Wednesday, Thursday. And I'd get the call as soon as I got home from school and they'd be like, he didn't show. Mm-hmm. I mean, they never, and 10 it's a short term. What did you tell that guy? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you teach him? What'd you te- what did you say to him about hush puppies? <laughs> What did you say to him about Brenda? <laughs> what did you do? I always, I always, and then a lot of times, <laughs> of I was supposed to be there at four o'clock. Okay, and I'd get home from school at like three thirty, and usually I'd wolf down whatever dinner Mama, Mama had made. made for me. She'd leave me ribs or chicken. Or Early something. dinner. Early dinner. Three first, thirty. First, first dinner, <laughs> and I'd have another one about seven thirty, right, from the barbecue place. But I would get home, and I was like, I would train them on Monday and Tuesday, which were the slow days, and then they were going to work like Wednesday, and then I'd do Thursday, Friday, and they come back. You know, they start to work. So on Tuesday, I would get home, and about 4.10, the phone would start ringing, you know, the landline. And I'd be like, I said, darn, they're calling me into work. I'd get mm-hmm. so mad, and I'd, wa- I'd want to not answer the phone. But my father would always be like, oh. Kelvin's not coming in. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He'd pick it up. He'd make me go to work. And then I'd have to work every – and we'd have to find somebody else. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was brutal. It was so bad. Ah, meatloaf to go. <laughs> I was working <laughs> all the oh, – But you don't want somebody working for your company – that's not going to do a good job. I mean, if they're not there, it's, it's a pain. Yeah. For but the right business, now, but, but listen to what Manfred 5000 said. And right now, you just got to take what you can get. And people do leave. That's that That's that Uber Grubhub kind of, I'll work when I want to work. work. Mm-hmm. And when I don't want to work, I'm yep. not going to work. Yep. You know, it's it, you talk about economic news. My, work, my wife works for a large company that has, you know, white collar and blue collar employees. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're, they make manufacturing and mm-hmm. she's in the office. Mm hmm. And the where we live, there's, they're set to announce some big company that's going to start a new project or begin, you know, going to open a new business mm-hmm. in the near future. Yeah. And I said that's good news for the area. She said no, but bad news for us. We'll lose workers. Really? <laughs> They'll their their pool of employees may go to the it new go, place. It goes, mm. you, know, you don't even think I the blue collar workers. That. Yeah. Because when I see. I mean, there's big news here for like a big plant. Coming. That's it. That's it. Oh yeah, and I saw it on the news yesterday. I was like, this is great. I mean, yeah, it's like two. Yeah, on the surface, jobs. you think that, yeah. but you yeah. don't think. Yeah. Huge. You, I didn't think it to that level. Your biggie's he's typing up his uh, resignation. <laughs> <laughs> what, you, what you doing in there, <laughs> dear stupid son of a bitch? <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> I've been waiting a long time to say this. Long time. <laughs>